right, good morning everybody. We're we're here with one of our, our 9,000 subscriber contest winner. It's taken, stupid camera. It's taken us a little bit to get them out and I apologize about that, but I wanted to make sure that the, and it still looks like it's gonna be a little on the bumpy side and it looks like we might have some rain coming in this afternoon, but we should be able to get on the snapper bite and grouper bite pretty good. Uh, I know some buddies that did real well yesterday. So we're gonna go in, get his jigs, get everything ready. Your name is Brent. Uh, Brent, yeah. Yep, Brent O'Neill. He's a 9,000 subscriber winner, so if people think, oh, we just pick winners and we don't do anything with them. We do get eventually around to it, so let's go get his <laughs> jig heads. Now, um, you can pick pretty much any four jig heads that you want. I, I'll, if you're used to circle hooks, the Stewies would be good for you. If you're used to setting the hook, these will be good for you, or you can do a combination of both. Okay. So. Um, the sizes that I like is the one ounce and the three quarter. All right. Um. Color doesn't matter. It don't matter. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I keep telling people that, and I don't think they believe me. I have no idea. I guess I'll find out today. Don't go that. Don't go light. No. Unless you want light. to, but if you're gonna, it, 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 unless you have other thoughts about that. Yeah. I was... Okay. Then go ahead. Appreciate it. Yep, not a problem. All right, he's ready to go. We're ready to go. The boat's in the water, so let's get to it. All right, sounds good. Thanks. All right, well, we got bait. Wasn't too bad at all. A lot of little bait. But then again, we caught a ton of pinfish, and that's what I've heard that these fish were eating. So now we're going to go off and hit the fishing grounds and try to get him on his biggest grouper. What's your biggest snap? Uh, grouper? Snap. Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe six. That's not a bad snapper though for Tampa Bay, but we're gonna get him on his biggest grouper is only like 15 inches, so we'll, we'll definitely beat that today. Yeah. Well, Brent just got his first taste of um <laughs> of what it's like to fish out here. He just got railed. Sure did. And. Uh, what were, what did you have on pinfish? Yeah, pinfish. Yeah, he absolutely got railed. I've already got a snapper in the box. Um, the, the, once we got out of here, the tide actually looks like it's pretty much dead on top, but it's coming in underneath. Uh, so I'm free lining for a little bit. I won't be able to do it too much longer. Um, I just lost the fish, but he just got absolutely railed. Did you tighten your drag down? Yeah. Okay. I can tell you right now, that's a grouper. Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah. He'll, he'll be a little short. He'll probably come in at like 21 and a half, 22, but here's a measuring stick here if you want to measure. This is a nice fish. Still. Yep. 21. <laughs> Brent has officially caught his largest grouper. Sure have. 20, it was 21. I think we can get one bigger than that today. I just put another snapper in the box. He's got another one. Oh, nice snapper. That's a good one. That's his biggest snapper ever. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're going home. We're done. It's uh, 7.49. He's caught his biggest grouper, biggest snapper. We're done. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this snapper. Nice one. Well, he's, he's caught on very quickly, just like our first subscriber winner, Victor, he caught on very quickly, which is nice because it, I want him to catch fish, I want him to have fun, and he's caught on very quickly. It's, it's, um, it's really fun to see people experience this kind of for the, for the first time. I mean, he's done some kind of fishing like this, but, but he, he really hasn't gotten into it too much. And uh, I hope I don't spoil him too much today. 
his yeah, his man. family's probably gonna watch this and say, Dad, why oh. can't you do that with us? Oh yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> but smart. hopefully, hopefully you can learn what we're doing today, and it will help you do do the things that we're doing, so you can put your family on fish, because that's why right. we do this. For sure. Yeah, and um, you know, so teaching him the techniques that we're doing and showing him what we're doing and giving him s spots to go out and fish. I'm gonna show him some areas where, cause he doesn't have a spot lock, so he has an anchor. So I'm gonna show him some areas where he can come and anchor. Ooh, I just got a hammer. And um, so he can anchor and fish productively and catch fish on a consistent basis. So that's that's the key with doing this is, first of all, meeting new people, meeting new friends. Cause I can tell you right now, I'm gonna be taking him out again real nice guy um, I'll probably get it arranged to where I can get his kids because his kids flat out love to fish so we'll probably arrange that too because I love to take kids fishing especially when they can if they can handle this kind of fishing oh, which if my eight-year-old can handle it oh, yours yeah. probably can handle it but this is what it's all about this meeting new fishermen meeting new friends coming out here and showing people what we do and that's why we do these contest giveaways and and it's just a pleasure getting people out like this and being able to do this and and uh, him achieve catching his biggest grouper on his first fish up today was his biggest grouper oh, yeah, and his second sure. fish up was his biggest snapper and we're just started it's only 740 or 751 now so we've just started the day i'm hoping that we can get most of the day in before the storms the storms came in yesterday at about 3 30 so i think by that time the tide's going to turn and go out and the bite's going to shut down anyway so I think we're going to catch a lot of fish though today. Oh, I have yeah. a good feeling about that. It starts out awesome, I know that. <laughs> what happened? Like, what happened, you Brent? I thought you didn't grow it out of my hand. <laughs> this fish literally almost took the rod right out of his hand. Another snapper. He caught, he caught him looking at it. Caught him right in the eye. <laughs> oh! I told you it wasn't too big. It just no, it, it was just a matter big. of time. What's happening is this boat is starting to shift more this way because that tide is starting to come in some more. And oh. so I told Brent to move to this side fish. of the boat. This feels like a snapper. Um. And so he moved to this side of the boat and immediately got bit. So, yep, that was nope. it. That's a trooper. It sure is. I need a one. Can you do these? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, if you lose them, I know a guy that makes them. Yeah, sense. right? <laughs> I figured you did. Not a bad little grouper. No, not at all. Right now, it doesn't really matter what we're sending down. They're eating white bait and pinfish. already have our limited snapper and he just caught another nice one Never so, we're, do this <laughs> so we're probably gonna change things up and we're probably gonna go and maybe free line for some grouper I'm not sure yet that tide start or that wind starting to pick up a little bit so that's what we might go do well we got our limited snapper so I, I asked Brent I said hey do you want to go free line to grouper and he's like, yeah, I don't care. We'll do whatever whatever you want to do. So <laughs> we came out here and I tried to describe I tried to describe what the what the bite's gonna be like. And it's hard to put into words. And he just he just absolutely got railed. Tore off like a train. <laughs> he was like, oh my god. I said, I told you. But it's hard to prepare somebody for for that bite because it just it's it's so nope that's your bait you'll know when you get bit your bait's gonna get bit here in a second yep there ah oh, you missed him
Okay, what we're doing now is we're actually free line and dead bait. Oh, he's got oh that's what happens is when you're playing with your phone. With your phone yeah. <laughs> exactly. But see how fast he was taking it out? Did he? Yeah. But what what we're doing is we're free lining to this grouper and we've been chumming up. Oh son of a biscuit eater. And we're chumming them up with dead bait and they're coming up off the bottom. But what I was explaining uh, to Brent is how important it is to not keep a tight line when you're when you're when you're free lining like that because what happens is if you if you keep a tight line and you pull on it to let more line out, that bait will flutter and it doesn't look natural like the other stuff that's going down and they won't eat it. Sure. So make sure that you leave a loop in your line on the water. And like with the conventional, I'm able to I'm able to feed it line with my hand and keep it smooth but on a, on the spinning rod you want to be able to pull it against on the side of the water and let it drop down don't dip down too much because you let yep there you go Ooh, that, that's probably going to be a keeper, my friend. Or right at it. That's a nice fish. He's long. He's long. Or maybe not. Yep, they're hit. See how he's trying to go to the ledge? Oh yeah, they dig hard. Seems unreal, man. That's a keeper too. Yeah. That's a big fish, man. It's huge. He's probably gonna keep. I don't think he's gonna keep. He's gonna be just short of it. I think. Yeah. Oh. You know, fire? I would have never, just no way I would have ever thought to try to just fish with dead white man. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you'd never think it. I mean, we've tried it a little bit at the reef, but I've had a weight on, so it goes down too fast. Yeah. It, it don't look natural. Right. That's the thing. It looks natural floating like the rest of this. Um, the rest of the chum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you you see how if we if we were trying to come up that ledge, you, yeah, um, there's no way yeah, there's we would no lose way. every single one. You gotta. That's the key to pull them away from. Them. They're way up on the ledge. Huh? They're way up on the ledge. <laughs> what do you think if I hook two of them? I don't think you're letting it go far enough. Is it, I gotta let it go further? Mm -hmm. Yours is just going faster than mine because it's conventional, right? No, they should be float. See, he just spit up two chummers. Oh, wow. Well, you just know what you're doing. That's what it is. <laughs> As I was just explaining to Brent, sometimes we pull it to a spot and we get boom, 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 a couple of fish, and then it shuts right off. like. Either something showed up or they just caught on really quick. So in that case, what I told them is, I'll move. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. 25 spots in a trip, depending on what's going on. And uh, do I like to move that much? Not really, but it is what it is. You don't want to sit on a spot too, too long either. Um, as we witnessed where we caught our keeper gags, uh, the, the bite actually shut off because we broke off on four or five fish there and it shut right off and it did that at another spot where we were free lining for group or two and it shut right off because we broke off a few times so just kind of understanding kind of what you're looking at and and what you're doing and, and if, if 
if you're at a spot and you try different baits and nothing's going move don't sit somebody told me that they fished the skyway for like four or five hours and just sat in the same spot you don't want to do that you want to move if you're not catching fish in that spot there's a reason why you're not catching fish in that spot so just make it a point to kind of broaden your horizons per se and and get out there and, and test different waters because every spot that we go to we don't catch fish but we're fortunate enough to have over 800 waypoints so we can jump to spot to spot to spot to spot he's been amazed at how many spots that i have oh, some yeah. of them are close but um it's they're they're still far enough apart what i was just telling brent is that um a lot of the times we don't show the slow times like right now we've already jumped three or four different spots right in here i'm sorry two two spots and um first couple baits in the water fish and then nothing got to this spot got the bait in the water boom red grouper then haven't gotten a bite since um i don't want to show the slow parts because it's boring <laughs> it's not fun but i just want to show people oh 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 just got bumped i just want to show people that it's not always catch fish catch fish catch fish i just make it look like that but earlier this morning it was catch fish oh, catch yeah. fish catch fish <laughs> uh, it was it was stupid this morning I mean, we had our we had our snapper limit i think before 8 8 30. yeah yeah they're just mouthing these baits when you see when you have one that's been hit like this that looks like it could have been a mackerel but um you might as well just throw them back in the water because they're not going to bite them again. At least that's a consensus. Usually that's what happens. Yeah. See, yeah, case in point, what I did was I hooked two little white baits in the tail and sent it down there. And as soon as it got down there, it immediately got hit. So if you are on a spot and you're marking fish and all kinds of things like that, try different methods. Always try to find a pattern to the madness because changing it up works i don't care what you say i mean i was selling cut bait down there and i couldn't get bit on cut bait so i'm changing it up i'm trying to find different ways because there's definitely fish down there now Brenton just did a small little experiment. He went ahead and, and hooked two little white bait in the head instead of the, the tail. And he didn't get bit. The ones that with the tails been hooked, he's been getting bit. So just that slight little difference is all it takes. One thing you wanna make sure of is when you're dropping your bait down, you wanna make sure as soon as it hits the bottom, you wanna flip that bale and get it closed as, as fast as possible because if the bite is on there's a lot of time that if there's just enough slack in your line they'll get your bait and you'll never feel it that just happened to me so you want to make sure that you flip your bale as soon as it hits the bottom so you're tight on your bait so you can feel the bite especially when they're when they're on he's he's rocked up right now and what i'm explaining to him is if he lets line loose what happens is that grouper if they get down into a hole they flare their gills out and they stick themselves in a hole in a rock. So if they don't feel the pressure anymore, they usually will unflare their gills and come out. So sometimes you got to give them a little bit to do it, but he had a pretty good fish on. All right, now flip your bail and reel as fast as you can. No, oh, you're still in it. Now play it like a guitar string. He's not wanting to come out. But always remember that if you get rocked up, sometimes you can wait them out and get them out of the hole. Sometimes it doesn't work out that well. But um, if you do get rocked up, flip that bail, let the line loose. And the same goes for snook, actually. I've had this happen uh, a few times where 
we're fighting a snook and the snook goes around the dock like two or three times he wraps wraps himself around the dock and I told my client flip the bale and let him loose and that snook swam right back around the dock and we were able to pull him out he was a 36 inch snook so with snook it does the same thing Ooh, big old snapper. Told you there's some. Just swing them in. Just swing them in. There you go. Nice. Well, that was a great trip. We accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. We got him on his biggest grouper and snapper. He caught one, uh, a grouper at 24 and a half, and then he caught a snapper that's probably around 19, 20 inches. That was a good fish. fish. Yeah. So we had a great day. It's going to get cut short a little bit by some rain, but that tide has turned and started to go out. So we're going to head on back to the shop and do some cleaning of fish. Well, he's going to clean the fish. I clean the boat. But uh, all right, folks, we made it back to the dock right before the rains are coming in. And we got all the fish clean. That was a big bag of fish. Big bag of fish. <laughs> that was a big bag of yeah. fish. And um, I just want to say thanks for coming out and going fishing with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, thank you for having me, man. It was awesome. Good. Best trip I've ever been on, <laughs> by far. Oh, no. What no. you, you speak is true. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in it. Well, you know, it's it's that's what we try to show, is that we don't hide anything. No, it's for real. And as you saw, we went out there and did the, did the things that we talk about, and we caught fish. Right. And we did go through a slow slump there, but most of all, we, we caught fish pretty much throughout the day. Oh, yeah. We'd have to bounce around a little bit, but... Um, Overall, it was a great day and, and uh, good weather until about now. But uh, again, thank you. And if you have not signed up for the giveaway, go to our YouTube, our, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, our, duh, our, our website at tampabayfishingchannel.com and sign up on the front page and subscribe to our YouTube channel because the faster our YouTube channel grows, the more people we pick to go fishing with us just like Brent did today. So Brent, would you highly recommend that? By far, for sure. Awesome. Awesome trip. Well, awesome, thank you very awesome much. Awesome guy to go with. You uh, can ask for a better person. I appreciate that very much. That means a lot, man. That means a lot. Same to you. You're definitely a, a guy that I would definitely have back on the boat again. Anytime. So. I'd be ready to go. All right. <laughs> well, thanks again. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.